A huge breakout is coming for Bitcoin and the crypto markets, according to this indicator. But the question is, which way? Because technically speaking, we could see it go either way. Let me know down below what you think. Is it to the upside or the downside? But I'm going to show you what I think in this video. So make sure to strap on in and pay attention. Now, the first thing I'll say before we even jump into the charts is I've used this analogy before. Uh, in this market, we're talking about where the altcoins are going to go, where Bitcoin is going to go, but Bitcoin is like the owner walking the dog. Yes, the altcoins in this case are the dog. And technically speaking, that dog, it can run out ahead. It maybe has a long leash. It gets out ahead. It's really excited. Sometimes it smells something. You walk past it. It lags a little behind. Sometimes it's a good dog and it rock, walks right beside your leg. But ultimately, that dog is going wherever you, the owner, go. And in this case, when it comes to crypto, Bitcoin, the owner, altcoins, the dog, Bitcoin is the main decider of where the market is going to go. Alts can run ahead or lag behind, but ultimately they're going to follow suit in what Bitcoin is doing. And there's something big showing on the charts right now that that breakout is coming. Let's go ahead and go over to it. This is the Bitcoin chart. Now, after this rocket ship all the way up to 38,000 here last week on the 9th, we've kind of been trading sideways over the last couple of days. And what the bears are going to tell you is a, a distribution phase where you're trading sideways and there's going to be a big sell off to the downside. But the bulls are going to say, no, this is more of an accumulation phase. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys I'm in the camp of accumulation phase. Why is that? Well, we've seen this happen several times here before in this same rally. Now, you can make the argument down here, this was more of a accumulation phase where we were just rallying, getting ready for it. We had the hype of not only China starting to buy, but also the fake news about the ETFs. But ultimately, we rally up, we trade sideways, we reaccumulate, we trade up, trade sideways, trade up. And now we've had a big, long period of time of sideways trading. We had a nice little peak here the other day. But this is another, in my opinion, another accumulation phase. Why? Because I do believe when we do reach the peak of this little bull trend, again, I call this a pre-bull market bull trend, there will be a dip that comes in somewhere close or over 30% dip to the downside. But I do think that's going to be a blow off top. What am I talking about with that blow off top? Well, let's go to the daily chart. Let's go all the way back to 2019. I do believe we're going to see something similar to back what we saw over here. Now, this isn't a perfect blow off top, but you will see after a very, very big explosive day on the last day of this rally, you do see a big pullback come over the next couple of days. Yeah, maybe there's been bounces up that gets close to those levels, but you're not going to see us get to the top and then trade sideways you're going to see us get to the top and have some more volatility come in. Uh, this to me looks more like what we saw back here in May of 2019, where we rallied up and then we traded sideways. Yes, we hit this green line. And I'm going to talk more about that here in a second. But even though we had an 18% pullback, this was more of an accumulation phase before the last big leg of the bull trend. What we currently have, when you scroll back over to right now, the current uh, price action of Bitcoin, give me a second, there we go, you do not see a big explosion with a very fast drop. In fact, even though we've seen three red candles or we're on our third red candle right now, this is still a very sideways moving price action. To me, that speaks accumulation. Now, could we drop all the way back down to these levels? Let's start by just going to the four hour chart and talking about uh, the big breakout prediction that is coming. Now to do this, we gotta take a look at the Bollinger Bands. And even this morning, as I was prepping, we did wick down here. And at one point it looked like the red candle was outside of it and you, the bears are probably gonna have a field day with that, saying, oh, there we go, we, break, we broke out to the downside, we're gonna have a huge plunge. Well, we've wicked back up, we're kinda hovering right at the bottom level of those Bollinger Bands, but we are constricted. Now, why am I not too constricted? Concerned at this point about the Bears winning. We've seen this happen before. Let's look at even most recent history of the Bollinger Bands before big breakouts. This big breakout to the upside started with a move to the bottom side of these Bollinger Bands. You can see three different wicks down below those bands, but then a move to the upside and we exploded to the upside. Same thing happened back here on November 1st, move below the bands, explode to the upside, move below the bands. This wasn't really an explosion to the upside, but we did move to the upside over there. Uh, we didn't get one necessarily all the way back here, but that doesn't mean that, that we have to see it happen just like that. You can see during these long sideways moving processes of Bollinger Bands that you do sometimes have the wick move to the opposite side first and then a breakout coming. But the question is, 
Okay, that's the bullish side. Everyone wants to say break to the upside, but could we break to the downside? And the answer is absolutely yes. What are the levels that we are looking for for a potential breakout to the downside? Grab the wrong button there. Let me turn off my Bollinger Bands. The first one is you, you got to take a look just even more recently where this was a bullish flag pattern. I, I got really bullish last week when we broke above it, broke above this green line, but ultimately we're back down inside of this band. But the first thing I'm looking at here, we have a couple different levels. First of all, we have these support or former resistance bands right here at about 36,000. 36,000 is going to be interesting. And then you also, when you start to reach this blue line, somewhere around 35 to 35, three, I could see us coming back down that far easily. The biggest one that we've talked about for a while would be down all the way to $31,000. Now, that'd be a decent size pullback. In fact, it would be about an 18% pullback from those levels we just talked about. But guess what? That's pretty consistent if what I'm saying is true. We don't have to follow this move exactly 100%, but wouldn't that be interesting if we pulled back down to 31,000 because that's the exact same pullback that we had back here in May of 2019 before a next big wave of that bull trend, 18% right there. So could that still happen? Could we see price action drop all the way to 31,000? It could. I'm not leaning that direction of that prediction at this point, uh, especially when I'm looking at some of these things on smaller time frames. Yeah, the daily chart, we're seeing a red reversal come in. We're seeing the oscillators be really, really high here, but we've seen them. I mean, look at all these other ones that we've briefly corrected on, but then kind of ignored as a whole. This is a bull trend that you do see overbought bearish signals ignored left and right. But as you move to the lower time frames, you're going to see the four hour chart. Are we seeing any buy signals necessarily? No, but we are seeing a green histogram start to develop on our MVP oscillator. We're seeing the oscillators get extremely low. In fact, they're right now kind of flirting with the concept of being lower than the previous lows, even though price action is nowhere close. That would form what we would call bullish divergence, major bullish move for this trend. Uh, when I get even lower towards the one hour charts, as we're starting to look at this Bollinger Band, well, the one hour chart is showing us that we are overextended, that we are getting some bullish signals, that we could be making a move to the upside coming very, very soon. Either way, I do want to warn everyone, people are looking at these red candles, they're questioning, should I start to short the market? And, and while I'm not here to give you financial advice, I can tell you this. This is not the time you want to be shorting. Look at the bull trend that is going on here. We are still, despite the fact that we're moving down right here, compared to recent days and the last couple of weeks, we are still setting higher highs, higher lows. That is a bull trend and the trend is your friend until it ends. When does it end? I would say this, this trend would end if you saw a break back below this yellow line. If we go to break all the way back down towards 26,800, then I think you could make the argument that we are in a bear trend at that point. I just don't see that happening right now. I think there's still too much bullishness happening. Nothing bearish has come out in the news to suppress the price just yet. In fact, I, at this point, I'm kind of sitting here saying, I think the next time that we see a rejection of price action with a significant move to the downside, again, I'm talking about 30, maybe even more than 30% dip, I think it's actually going to be on the day that we do get the approval of the ETF because there's going to be a month delay after that approval before that ETF is actually operational. That will allow those large entities to fill their bags even more without screwing over their millions of clients. To me, I still see another push up above 40,000, maybe up towards this 45, 600 level coming soon. However, however, I am aware and I'm keeping an eye on what happens if these Bollinger Bands break out to the downside. I am going to be looking to not sell or short Bitcoin, but look for lower levels to buy into it even, even more. Now, we're seeing similar things happen on other altcoins. Let's kind of just going to go through here. Ethereum kind of coming in low on its Bollinger Bands. But one thing I love about what Ethereum's doing is it's getting right down here and defending $2,027, which is the resistance zone. And we got the daily chart. It is the resistance zone that was formerly the top of this ascending triangle we've broken through and now we're working to turn it into support that's a major bullish thing i love seeing it but again ethereum's got its own bollinger bands here on the four hour chart that are getting constricted they're going to see a breakout coming very very soon as well but i'm loving seeing we got bullish divergence forming on ethereum we have a lot of bullish things kind of happening getting back down towards the rsi midline and it looks like we're starting to move back to the upside money flow is super low and curling to come back to the upside ethereum looks really good at the moment cardano pulled back down to remember 36 
six cents was a, a top level we talked about, like we're looking to take profit. Well, guess what? If it was a form of resistance, it's also going to be a strong level of support. It's sitting there right at the bottom of its Bollinger Bands looking for a breakout coming very, very soon. But you are seeing buy oscillators coming in here on the MVP oscillator. RSI is super, super low. I'm loving what I'm seeing on these coins. Solana, of course, big news this morning as they are going to get futures trading on Coinbase, hovering at another constricted Bollinger Bands, but they're using the 24-hour SMA as support. That's bullish. Uh, what I'm looking at here, guys, as we scroll through the altcoins, yes, there are questions. Yes, we're lower than we were here just a couple of days ago. But as a whole, like I said, what really matters is what's happening on this Bitcoin chart. This is the owner. This is the this is the human with the leash. Is Bitcoin moving to the downside? Then yes, we might see altcoins follow. And in fact, we might see altcoins fall even harder. But if we would move here, if we bounce here and move to the upside, watch for some expressive things to happen. We've talked about a potential $3,200 for Ethereum. We've talked about a potential 60 cent uh, uh, price action for Cardano. 80 to $90 for Solana, $20 for Link. All of these are still doable, but we do need to see Bitcoin defend the support, break to the upside. Let me know in the comments down below what you think is gonna happen. Is this the top? Is this the end? Is the fairy tale over for this bull trend? Or do we have one more good leg to go? Go ahead and smash that like button and hit subscribe if you have enjoyed this video. And make sure you turn on that notification bell as well so you don't miss a single video. We're constantly putting out top-notch TA and news updates to help you continue to decide for yourself better and better every day how you want to invest your hard-earned money to change your life and your family's life forever. That's what we're all about here at Investing Bros. If you love it, hit that subscribe button. But with that said, guys, that's all I have for you in this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.